<laughs> uh, so we were in the middle of a discussion when I realized we weren't recording, and this is a story that I do need the internet to hear. Um, I was on a FaceTime call with originally one of my best friends, and it eventually became both of them. And she she was like, have you heard uh, that song by Racial Girl? And I was like, no, what are you talking about? She's like, oh, it must be like really big on maybe it's like black TikTok or something. She's black for context. Um, and so she's like, maybe this is just like on my side of TikTok. Like this is where I'm getting it. She goes, there's this guy. This album is from 2009. This guy puts out an album of music called Ladies of Color, and all of the songs where is this guy? are different ethnicities, and it's so bad. It's so, it's so atrocious. I, Ladies of Color by Sean Fury. Actually, the first couple are Big Girls and Why Should It Matter, and you do get Big Girls 2 and Why Should It Matter 2 at the end of the album, but the rest are as follows. Ebony Princess, Snow, Latina, Asian Girl, Indian Arabic girl, not Indian or Arabic or like Indian and Ar- Indian Arabic girl, exotic girls, which is my personal favorite. Uh, it's acapella for some reason, um, but badly <laughs> and biracial. Now, all of these are terrible, mostly because this man can't sing, um, but also for the weird fetish vibes. Um, yeah. I- so we're we're talking about this because. The, the friend who showed me this is black, and the other friend who had not gotten on the call yet, she's Sri Lankan. Mm-hmm. And so we're, at, we're figuring out, we're like, okay, so you're Ebony Princess, I am Snow. <laughs> what is she? Because Sri Lanka, like, that's Asian, but you can tell the Asian he means, he refers to, like, yellow skin. Like, you know what kind of Asian he means, and it's oh. East Asian. So we're like, is she Indian Arabic girl? But the thing is, she's neither Indian nor Arabic. So we spent a good chunk of time and eventually brought her in, and we're like, which of these songs is you? Because Indian Arabic girl, I have to assume he just watched Aladdin. This is why it tied into our previous discussion. Oh, we were talking like, how about is Disney this live action movies? <laughs> um, and I saw a debate about whether Jasmine is Indian or Arabic, and it's just mm-hmm. kind of not clear. I think she's Persian, but mm-hmm. like Agrabah, like it's Arabian Nights, but. I, it just there's so much yeah. that isn't clear going on there and so i'm like i'm pretty sure he watched aladdin and then wrote the song indian arabic girl <laughs> um i highly recommend giving this a listen because it's terrible and it made me laugh and that's from like 2010 2009 yeah Nine. he wrote a lot of music in between 2009 and 2011 wow. a lot of full albums but this is my favorite the and first one out- is about Jesus. Oh my. The first and album I love put out that it's still being listened to is Jesus in 2023. Made Me Do It. Jesus Made Me Do It. The albums are all phenomenally named, by the way. Jesus Made Me Do It, Ladies of Color. Then you have uh, The Legend of Sean Fury, So Let It Be Written. <laughs> Incredible. Possibly my favorite. Um, then we have, and then there was Sean Fury, Rex Imperius, in quote. Uh, Sean Fury's Diversity. Um, there's only one Sean Fury, the collection, the man, the myth, the Sean Fury, and Sean Fury is, I don't know how to say this, but Naya's Furium. So truly wonderful. I just listen to the album, ladies of color. It's awful. Wow. That that's my recommend. This is about a completely different album, this episode, but that yeah. is my music recommendation. Wow, we've got all the recommendations today. <laughs> None quite so genre bending, boundary jumping, wall breaking recommendations as that. So, I mean, I don't know what you, you want. You could stop it here or you could keep listening. <laughs> For slightly lesser <laughs> quality recommendation. <laughs> Just trying to look out for you. <laughs> because... <laughs> you, can't, you can't breathe. I'm fine. 
She was not fine. Um, we are doing 1989 Taylor's version. From Deluxe. TBR. I suppose. Yeah. I add the sweeter than fiction for the symmetry of it. Romance your TBRs for it. Yes. Taylor's version, version. Deluxe Romance your TBR. <laughs> What's the longest we could make that title? <laughs> so very long. So true. Wow. Love that. All the versions. We're finally doing it. This was we a hard are. album. I still don't feel confident in a lot. I agree. There are quite a few that I'm like, this can work. Yeah. But if it's I, not like, squint, take off my glasses. It's not as solid as I felt with Speak Now. Yeah, I agree. I just – it just – and the songs that I had the most trouble with were surprising. Mm-hmm. I was like, why – there were so I'm many having... that I was like, this is so romance novel, and I feel uh-huh. like I've read something that matches it, but I could not think of what it was. Unless maybe it was contemporary, but... Yeah. I don't know. And I mean, this album is definitely, like, very... Contemporary. Like, contemporary. I agree. So <laughs> it was kind of like... Uh... But you know uh, what? But we did it. We did it. We definitely did it. I was still down to the wire, like, changing some things out. Uh, yeah, um, I, I changed some things a couple hours ago. So, mm-hmm. and yeah, I it was a hard one. Twas, but what a banger of a re-recording, though. That's so true. Good That's God, so true. Mm. I, I wasn't that prepared. Single hand, I have always liked the songs of 1989, but I would never just put on the album. Mm. Like it's you, the songs are in lots of other playlists. Mm-hmm. So I never considered it one of my favorites, but now it has shot up in my rankings. Mm-hmm. This is one of my top albums. I don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. I was definitely like when it first came out, I was like, she's going pop. <laughs> I was a little bit because like all my friends who hadn't listened to Taylor were like suddenly Taylor fans. So I was like, mm. uh, I got over that real quick because I loved it. Um, I mean, I also felt that way about like Red when she did – um we are never getting back together. Like I remember in like 22, I think she, when she did her album cover reveal, she also, she sang like those two songs and then treacherous. And I was like, what is this album going to be? And then the whole thing was like, great. Um, so I was definitely like, it's always been a top album, but this, like, I didn't think she could really improve it. Like I was skeptical of just like how she could make it better. And I think like, all of the songs sonically sound better. I think she went further into the 80s inspiration. And I love those vault tracks so much. It's true. So go her for making a great album again. Mm. Although, if anything, the vault tracks are hard to match with romance novels. They I feel like some of them were easier than others. True. Some of them, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. We're done. <laughs> EDs, a book I read two years EDs? ago <laughs> that I barely remember. I'm like, you know, it's fine. We're like, fine. I think that matches the vibes. Yeah. Maybe. I'm like, uh, somebody's going to read this on our recommendation and be like, Wh- what? Don't worry. Vibes are so personal. They really are. And it's just like you said, I think for Speak Now, some songs like fit. But, like, would not fit the album itself. Like, they fit the Mm. lyrics, but maybe they don't fit, like, the album. This one, I was like, you know what? I'm not – I can't be that picky. I was like – So, I just need anything. Yeah. (laughs) Does a Highlander scream 1989? (laughs) No. Do I have a few? Yeah. Well, but if you wanted to match to the vibes of the album, they would have to all be, like, Gilded Age. Yeah. Yeah, It would be hard. Because it's a New York album. And, Uh like, they can't all be Gilded Age, guys. Yeah, and I love that I never, I didn't even choose a New York one for Welcome to New York. What do you mean? It's called, it's, the whole thing is about New York. You'll understand. Okay. Um, but yeah, I have a, I don't have, I think I have like one other, or two. Mm, Yeah, two. I have a Shoop and the other one, so. But yeah, without further ado, here we are. We've got Welcome to New York. Am I going? Are you going? Sure. You go. Um, Take it away. I, well, I did pick a New York. I went with A Scandalous Deal by Joanna Shoup. Ooh, I don't think I've read that one. It's. I think it's an older one, or like mm-hmm. earlier. I, mean, I can picture the um, cover. 
Yeah. It's the only shoot I've read that isn't uh, the one series. Yeah, the Re- one Rebels. <laughs> you know, the one. <laughs> The one. That one. Rebels mm-hmm. of Fifth Avenue? Or is that the other one? I don't know. I don't Fifth know. Fifth Avenue Rebels. Thank you. That but probably. That may... or is, unless that's the other series. I feel like it's that one. I think it's Fifth Avenue, Avenue Rebels. Yeah. Whatever. A scandalous okay. deal. Um, It's this kind of convoluted. He's like a super rich guy in New York and he's building a hospital, a hospital, a hotel. Um, And he hired like an incredibly famous architect to do it. Um, cut to the architect who has not been able to work in many months because he has, it's never stated, but some kind of like dementia or some form of uh, illness that is affecting his memory. Mm. Um, So he has not been able to work in a long time, but luckily his daughter trained as an architect with him and aspires to be an architect. So basically she's been working under his name. Does she happen to be the architect in uh, The Bride Goes Rogue? Probably, but I don't remember. I have to assume because there's a there's a female architect. Then probably and she like about okay, cool. Now she has a book. I like that. Um, I have to assume because how many female yeah, architects yeah. are there? Uh, Good bet. Good anyway, bet. basically, she's coming to pretend that her dad sent her to work on it, but like never. Mm-hmm. She's working pretending that she's carrying out his orders, and also on the ship. Oh, and she's put three fiancés in the ground also. So everybody thinks she's super <laughs> unlucky. Also. That's also a thing. She's like the unlucky la- I don't remember. She has a nickname. Um, So she's trying to like not go somewhere where nobody knows her and on the ship crossing she has a really hot anonymous hookup with a guy Um, and then she gets there and it turns out it's her boss and he, she tells him that she's the daughter and that her father's sick and he can't come but not how sick he is. Um, mm-hmm. and so basically he's like, okay, we'll pretend that you're not related to him, but you're like his secretary who's here to oversee this building. But then there are lots of problems because there are workers like that don't want a woman on the site. Yeah. Um, and also they start hooking up in secret. There's just a lot happening here. However, it is very like, wow, New York, I'm here and it's the Gilded Age. <laughs> and like, wow. I can be an architect and... Uh, be who I want to be. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> I love how you said be who I want to <laughs> be. That was funny. You're um, welcome. Thank you. I chose a Caribbean heiress in Paris. One, it says it says a location in the title. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not I'm not batting all home runs today. But I do think this is one of the closer ones in vibes. Okay. Yeah. Um, It's also called the City of Lights. That is Paris. The lights don't blind me. I just think the vibes of like her going to Paris, looking for like the business ventures, getting railed on top of the Eiffel Tower. Lights are so bright. Can't blind you up there. She gets Um, railed on the Eiffel Tower. In mine, she gets railed in like a brand new hotel that isn't open yet i think oh, no I it's like not a hotel that. it's something else that's just been built it's something famous we love christening things with sex <laughs> so true <laughs> that's a welcome to new york for you um but yeah i just i felt that that one had the vibes of like going to a new place and being both a little starstruck but also having like hopes and dreams um but being brave enough to do it. So mm. that was mine. Whoo, blank space. This one, I tried not to pick this one because I was like, I've already picked it in another album, but I had to go Bombshell by Sarah McLean. I had to do it. I just think Cecily has just the attitude of blank space. I do have this one later. Mm-hmm. It's yep. Cecily does have big 1989 vibes. Yeah, I just feel like she really embodied the the kind of tongue in cheekness of the song, um, and also like her reputation was not nearly as bad as people were like saying. But she was also like not pro like she owned what she's done. Like she was not ashamed of anything she'd done. Um, and it's just a hot book. I love Caleb. I love that book. It gets some hate, but mm, delicious. I think it's also because I have a weird fascination with Mary Jane Wells' American accent, <laughs> which is doubly funny for that book. If you've read it, you know. But like, 
I don't like people hate it, but for some reason it just like unlocks a vault in me of yearning. <laughs> so, so there's that. <laughs> yeah. Um so true. So relatable. I also went with uh I think I might have picked this one for another one. Maybe not. Anyway, uh I, I also went with a heroine who's like fine call me a slut i don't care mm-hmm. um and that is the rake s by scarlet mm-hmm. Peckham. i think mm-hmm. she it my, mine's like if cecily were angrier i think yeah um mm-hmm. that idea of like everybody's decided i am this way and therefore i'm just gonna play it up and mm-hmm. behave the way that you think i'm gonna behave yeah. and also have some hot sex with a single dad <laughs> and good yeah. for her Great for her, might I add. Um, I also, as a backup, had The Ruin of a Rake by Cat Sebastian just because his reputation was, like, causing strife in his life. <laughs> Didn't mean to make that a rhyme. Um, and, like, he definitely had a bad reputation, but it was amplified and, like, made public and splashed everywhere by the other hero. <laughs> To add some drama in there. (laughs) It'd be like that. So true. Mm -hmm. Um, Style? Listen, Mm -hmm. do I have a back and forth relationship like that? No. Do I have a good girl? Yeah, good girl, bad boy? Yes. And that's a good girl's guide to rakes by Eva Lay. Um, That really fits. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. They do have a little bit of on and off, I think, with the Mm -hmm. like no strings vibes. And then he's trying to like court other people to get married yeah and a little bit happens at the end like it's not all easy breezy right um but really mainly the thing is the good girl i like bad that. boy with the long hair and the he's not an actor slash singer but he is a poet so mm-hmm. that's about as close to harry styles as you get in historical <laughs> romance <laughs> so true um i this one was hard i was just it style was hard <laughs> there's not much more i can say i did a daring pursuit by kate bateman mm. it's not necessarily the good girl bad boy What's i feel reverse? like it's, it's reversed in that sense um but even then like he does kind of have a little bit what like he's got an edge to him he's not like all good like at the beginning he's like why don't i like i could just fuck her now like <laughs> she's open to it um like he's not the typical like cinnamon roll like he's definitely not a cinnamon roll um and then i just think like she's really big into fashion so i was like style Uh uh-huh um i feel like they fit the vibes more of the song more than the lyrics but that one was hard and i do have to say um my friend maddie reads historical romance and she always says that um a week to be wicked by tessa dare is her style song so i wanted to throw that out there for anyone who wants to read that? Um, next is Out of the Woods. This one is an arc. Uh, doesn't come out till 2024, but I had to do it. It's The Diamond and the Duke by Christy Caldwell. Um, it's like book three in whatever series she's currently writing with Berkeley. Um, I was just really stuck on like the hospital scene and kind of like getting out of the woods um she met the guy when she was like pretty young and he was like going off to war and she has had like a crush on him um and then she ends up kind of like the lisa clapis book writing him letters as someone else because he's got like a sweetheart at home Mm -hmm. and then she doesn't write him back and then she picks it up and then she stops and then he gets injured these bitches in historical romance not writing they're like wounded i know i know it worked out better for him in that regard than the than the um, Lisa Kleypas one of at least the reason why she didn't uh, write back. But um, so then like she's he ends up getting like grievously wounded. Um, so like this entire like second half or even like two thirds of the book is him just like having to um, heal from the trauma and just talk to her. She's like one of the only people who can actually like um talk to him and there's a really emotional hospital like scene not they're not at a hospital but it's like a healer a bone setter actually 
Um, and it just really gave me those vibes of her always thinking like, is this – like, is he going to let me in? Are we going to get through it? And then obviously by the time that he's ready, she's kind of moved on and then it's dramatic. But it was really good. So I love that series so much. But that's that. I quite literally just switched my pick because I was mm. all mad because – so my backup for this one is uh, The Day of the Duchess by Sarah McLean. That one could go so many places. So many places. And this I was to slap it. But, <laughs> I, like, but it so I was many. I try really hard to only do one book per author in these. Yeah. So I can spread it out. And I have another Sarah McLean later. And so I finally was like, fine, Day of the Duchess. But then I just now realized I have a better or maybe not better, but different one that works mm-hmm. for this. So that is my backup because my God, that book is angsty. Yeah. Um and they go through a lot of woods. But I just realized Morning Glory. By Laverle Spencer mm. is so like th- they just cannot catch a break and they no. they fall in love and then he goes to war and then he's injured and he comes back and he's sad and then he gets arrested because they think he's murdered someone and they just eventually they get out of the woods though and there's like a moment where oh oh break up not break up but oh uh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna push you away but it's fine because we're gonna have the sweetest sappiest ending you've ever read in your entire life. Um, mm, and the sun came was. up and they were looking at morning glories <laughs> and each other. <laughs> nice one. Um, oh, I wrote the abbreviate is I, all you had to do is stay. Is that the full mm-hmm. title? I cannot cause she has that one. And then she has stay, stay, stay. There's too many stay yeah. songs. All you had to do is stay. How to deceive a Duke by Samara Parrish, which I think Ooh. I actually used on the official like forever pairings mm. that we did. But mm-hmm. I'm using it for this one, too, because um, it was my idea. <laughs> so it we're putting it in all the places. It. And also because I couldn't think of a better one. Because um, yeah. for twice over, because you start the book, it's already a second chance where he they were so in love. And then he left her for reasons. And so already you're like, my guy, all you literally all you had to do was stay like she was in love with you. Um, he really did. He screwed the pooch on that one. And then, strictly speaking, he didn't, like, leave the second time, but it has the, like, kind of big breakup vibes in the third mm-hmm. act. Mm-hmm. Um, that he has to do a a, a little the grand gesture situation. And it was cool. grand. It was grand. And I respect that. Um, but, yeah, just the vibes of her being, like, literally all you had to do. <laughs> <laughs> like... You just left and you never, like, really explained why. Oh, his mother. I hate that wench. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. I chose Marrying Off Morgan McBride by Amy I Barry. thought about that one. Yeah, he just kept on leaving. And I was <laughs> like, dude, stay. <laughs> like, literally, like, that one was definitely, it was a hard one for me to choose. Because at first I wanted to do Aphrodite and the Duke. But I didn't think, mm-hmm. he didn't grovel enough for me when to also it's not like one. he really left like he got married <laughs> well but i mean <laughs> yeah no like he didn't it, leave it was like a he different ca- he had to like mm-hmm. you read the why and you're like oh yeah you would be right? like a so then, bad like, person if you did because then she wasn't mad and then i wasn't mad so then i was like that doesn't give me the correct enough vibes mm-hmm. um but yeah morgan i was just like dude stay Junebug wanted him to stay. Like, I was just irritated at him, but I did still really enjoy the book um, because then she ends up leaving, and I was like, yes. See how you like that taste of your own medicine. Um, But, yeah, do I think that book fits 1989 vibes? Not really. (laughs) But if you want a strict (laughs) lyrical – interpretation like interpretation like she was just there to do the cooking to do the like she was she would have done anything she just wanted a family and a home and he just really fucked it up for so long like he was so back and forth stubborn um but i did end up liking him so there is that um and there was sex in that one (laughs) if you didn't know (laughs) just as an aside (laughs) It was hot, too. I was like, oh, okay. It's a good day for me all around. Um, 
The next one is Shake It Off. I think I also featured this story somewhere else, but I said screw it because in which Margot Halifax earns her shocking reputation by Alexandra Basti really gives me shake it off. Like Margot's just going to shake it off. Um, and that's kind of that. <laughs> I don't. I, I, yeah, she didn't, that is bad. <laughs> you know, like book two, let the rumors and stuff like get, get her down a little bit and like didn't really yeah. want the reputation. But Margot was kind of just like, yeah, I'm gonna go fuck this barrister outdoors. So and true. Have a good time. So true. And I love her. She for really it. did. Mm-hmm. I also have used this one previously. I don't care. I'm going yeah. with an island princess starts a scandal by Adriana yeah. Herrera. Um, <laughs> she was here to bang women and make art. Make hell yeah. Make very lesbian art. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, she was like fuck it all the time. <laughs> That was just the vibe I yeah. got from. Yeah, her. I'm blanking on we'll her be, name. Lose it's because not, no, no, that's book no, one. that's book um, one. Oh my god, Ma- I know Cora Ma- is the the other one. Why am I forgetting Cora? Yeah, this is gonna make me want to die. Um, I'll find jump out. off really tell us some things. Uh, anyway, well, while you're searching, it's just that, vibes. That's all yeah. I've got. I did actually have that one as a backup for style just because Taylor Swift gave an interview saying that style is about a person who would come and interrupt your wedding. Um, Manuela. and y- Manuela, yes. I knew there was an M. Um, and we know, because I can't stop talking about it, that she sure interrupted, that court interrupted Manuela's wedding. So, so true. Um, that was just a little fun thing. But I couldn't do another Adrian Herrera like that close together. So. It's true. But- Mm-hmm. It does also have the big city vibes that you were Hell yeah. you talked about. So. Mm-hmm. Uh oh, it's me. Mm-hmm. What's the name of this song? I, I wish you would. Oh, I wish you would. Okay, see, and then there's another wood somewhere. Too many. Um, as opposed to out of the wo- whatever. The point is, I wish you would. <laughs> uh, the ugly Duchess by Lisa James phones. is what I'm going. Ooh. With. Because specific, and this one I read, and I was like, it could work for a few. There Mm -hmm. are a few different ones it works for. I went with this one specifically because they fight, and he leaves for seven years and becomes a pirate, and then he comes back during the hearing to declare him dead in absentia. Uh So there's a lot of drama, and basically she's pissed at him for waiting until literally while they're trying to declare him dead like she's like you couldn't and he turns out he really couldn't come back until this point he didn't mean to time it like this it's just when he happened to be able to get there after you know recovering from having his throat cut and whatnot um but she's like you have the audacity to let us think you were dead for seven years and then you come back you don't bother to tell your wife that you're alive. You just show up and then, oh, you happen to pick me up while I fainted. And then he just stands there holding her and, like, talking to other people. And she's like, hello? Like, the audacity? Do you not care that I have full-on fainted? And she's pissed, but she literally says, she's like, I actually wouldn't be, like, I was really worried about him. And I mm-hmm. wanted him to come back and be alive. I'm only mad because of the way he's come back. But she's not mad that he has come back because he's, like, her childhood best friend who married her for the wrong reasons. And, like, in the past seven years, she's gotten over it. And it's just, like, ah, I hope he's alive. That's a so good those book. are the vibes. She's, like, I, I'm i not even mad anymore. Just preferably don't be dead in the Indian Ocean somewhere. <laughs> I mean, that's all you can really I wish ask. you would. I wish you would not be dead in the Indian Ocean somewhere. That's actually the uh, deluxe version of that song. Yeah. yeah. Um, I chose – this one was a hard one for me um, because to me it represents like a moment in a book, mm-hmm. you know, rather than like the full book. So it was like really hard for me to like pick mm-hmm. out a book with that moment. Um, so I, I don't really even know how I just like thought of this one, but I did. So we're going to go with it. Um, which is Scoundrel of My Heart by Lorraine Heath. Um, basically, the book is like split into two. Um, and I don't think it's really a spoiler because it's like in the summary, I believe. Um, uh, the first half, she is friends with his sister. He overhears her talking about how she would never marry a second son. That's a permanent chip on his shoulder. Once he hears it, he's like, I'm not worthy. So he gets like very angry about it. Um and but she's like they've always kind of like had the fighty but lusty relationship um and 
then his father commits treason. Unfortunately. I hate it when they do that. As fathers are wont to do, apparently, <laughs> in historical romance, they plot to kill the queen. They do it a lot. They yeah. They do it a lot. And so his older brother loses because uh, he's a- Wait, wait, wait. Before you finish explaining, have you seen the TikTok trend of the, like, we're girls. We're going to do such and such. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now I have developed a compulsive need to do that for a historical romance, but I'm a dad in a historical romance. I'm going to commit treason. And then let your children suffer the brunt of it. Oh. Sorry, continue. Yeah. That's well, all so I'm going to be able to think of now. So then he's technically in, like, a better position because he was only a second son. So he's not really, like, he was never going to be the duke. And so the the brother who was always going to be the duke is in, like, more hot water because now what does he do with his life? Um, so the second son, because he has that major chip on his shoulder all the way back from that, uh, girl rejecting him and she didn't even know she rejected him. He just overheard it. Um, he starts a club called the air or the spare. So only second sons and below or whatever can get in. So like firstborn sons literally can't get in. Um, he goes to the dark side. He's a little bit hot. He's a little bit bruised and battered. Um, so like the first half is her like they kind of become friends in the first half um and there's a duke in the land who's looking for a bride and so he advertises it um that he's like just write me a letter and I'll pick whoever I want to be my bride um she's like debating if she wants to do it and so this guy obviously is like I can't compete with a duke um and then the second half is him living in shame of his father's deeds and then creating <laughs> creating this nightclub it's like like a few years later maybe i don't really know um and then she finds him really hot now that he's like fully I'm a historical romance hero i'm gonna start a scandalous club <laughs> yes and she was really into it there's a thing that he does with the whole duke looking for a thing a wife that was like really dramatic and romantic but um the i'd never forget you as long as i live was very was the trigger for this book um and again like i just think the song is like a scene but then there is kind of that scene in the book like at the end it's very dramatic i don't know um but it felt like a very life-changing like relationship between the two um so yeah that's my long way of saying that's one of the ones that I kind of had to sh- be a crooked love in a straight line down. <laughs> so there we are. Uh, bad blood. Well, this one, it's just in the title. Never cross a Highlander by Lisa Rain. Don't do it. You're going to have bad blood. Um, this one. one was a little bit hard too because I just, I didn't quite know what I wanted the vibes to be. Um, but I distinctly remember, like, the big battle scene in this book. Mm-hmm. And, like, in the music video, like, it, like, mm-hmm. culminates to, like, the point where they're all going to battle. And so I, I had a TikTok really fun I need time. To send you. Ooh. Guys, I'm bringing up Formula One again. <laughs> <laughs> um, the McLaren team did a little com- – a very long, actually, commercial for their, like, Jack Daniels sponsorship on their mm-hmm. car for this past race. And it was, like, an elaborate – commercial where like the driver Lando and Oscar had to like go to Jack Daniels and like get this trailer and then they went on a road trip and it was very silly however there is a scene where the two of them are slow-mo dramatically walking away from something bursting into flames behind them hell yeah and somebody photoshot or like edit the- edited them into either side of Taylor <laughs> to make the video and I have I been it. watching it at least once a day so I just need you to know that exists I am very happy that exists. Thank you. Um, but yeah, that this one, like, I just, I really wanted, like, a really good rivalry and just, like, a good, like, bad villains um, that get comeuppance and a good battle scene. And I just really remember that. It was, like, a very cinematic um, True. battle scene in that one. And what a, just a good freaking book. True. So. True. Mm-hmm. I'm reusing things. It's Queen Bee. It's Queen Bee by Anna I had Howard. That. I literally had that when I, I was doing it. I just it literally so had no ago. other mm-hmm. that fits the, especially because Bad Blood is bleh, bleh, Bad Blood is a friendship breakup. Yep, I know. That's I had it. And I was like, Hannah, you can. No, I'm proud of you else. for coming up with something else because I couldn't. 
Um, yeah. So just know that I'm fully support. Thank you. You doing that. It's just the vibes it's are so, perfect. It's just better than revenge and bad blood. Mm-hmm. They're sisters. They are sisters. So true. Yeah. So there you I have agree. it. Mm-hmm. Um, wildest dreams. Uh, it's giving kind of forbidden secret affair that you Mm -hmm. think has no future for reasons Mm -hmm. and therefore i went her night with the duke by diana quincy Mm, i literally i was thinking about that one because look sometimes you hook up with a really hot guy in a hotel only to find out or an inn rather only to find out the next day that he's on his way to get Mm -hmm. betrothed to your stepdaughter and then you're still really into each other but he's betrothed to your stepdaughter shit happens guys also, bonus points for being um, a Palestinian heroine written by a yes. Palestinian author. Yes. So you should read it anyway if you haven't mm-hmm. already. You should but read also, the whole series and then the Duke gets death for it. All, just all They're the books. All so good. Um, but also Wildest Dreams vibes. Yes. I chose uh, The Lady Tempts and Air by Harper St. George. Mm-hmm. I also went with the – doomed aspect of the relationship like the Mm -hmm. one person knows it's going to end um that one basically she is a widow um she her husband got i believe like very angry when they couldn't get pregnant and it was a whole thing and so she knows that she can't have kids and that it's like impacted her relationships because she's scared if she would remarry that they would expect that of her um he is the heir um to the hu- the like shipping company i believe that his father owns this is like book 3 in the series um so he's american um and they first they have kind of like a snippy relationship and then they have to like go and rescue the book 2's heroine um cuz she goes on like a road trip with a scoundrel um who like compromises her and then they have to like go rescue her and you never you don't know in that book what they go through on that journey to get to them um so you learn a little bit about that in this one and then they just have hot sex um and she's just like i won't marry you because he she's like you need an heir like i you're not gonna want to stay um and so it's just a very dramatic moment throughout the uh, i guess at the end of when she leaves and he's just so hurt (laughs) he's so sad and yeah, it, I, well, since she's also like, he needs like a plot of land and then she's also like having, I think there's like an orphanage that she wants to put in the building and then they're kind of like battling in that sense, but they're also just like getting down and dirty on a rug in front of a fire. He's really hot. <laughs> um, I just felt like all of their scenes <laughs> were like, this is going to end, but let's just burn it down. So. Yeah, that's a good book. I think number two is my favorite, but that one's a close second. Mm-hmm. Wow, we've got How You Get the Girl Next. This one was a fun one because um, I chose A Rogue's Rules for Seduction by Eva Lay, um, which is Dom. Okay, I was like, yeah. which one is I saw it? your face. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to do mental math. It's <laughs> mental. not the one that I said. <laughs> no, no, so this is book three in that series. Okay. Um, I just think... If I were the girl, how you would get me <laughs> would be dressing like an ancient Greek hero, like taking me to this like stone, what was it? Like a, it was a pavilion. Pavilion and then blooding your knees going down on me, like groveling <laughs> and then like just trying to get my forgiveness the entire book because you know you were wrong you stand there like a ghost shaking from the rain he literally slept in the attic that was like leaking and he just like was literally soaking wet the next morning and she's like what are you doing he's like i'm being dramatic it was just i just think like that book is so funny while also being so like because it was angsty but in a different way than i thought it was gonna be and it was just so good and I just think if there was a manual on how to get the girl, <laughs> Dom, he knows it. He could write it. Um, and I think Willow would co-sign it. Um, yeah. Shout out to my man. <laughs> uh, 
I I also have one that's funny but also angsty, and that is Lady Isabella's Scandalous Marriage by Jennifer Ooh. Ashley, which Ooh. is from the Mackenzies and McBrides. See, I have not read it's it's the book after the Madness of Lordy and Mackenzie, which mm. I also have not read yet. So it's in that yet. That one I remember that one. Okay. Um, we'll be reading it though because I love Ian. He shows up in this book and he is fantastic. Anyway, mm-hmm. this one, the premise of the it you get not like flashbacks, but they talk about what happened in the past. So basically, Mac is like a big Scottish guy. Just a, he's a big Scottish. He's just a big Scottish. Um, and uh, Lady Isabella has her debut ball. She comes out and his like terrible, annoying friends who he is done with by the time we meet him. But at the time he has fallen in with them, they basically like bet that he can kiss this debutante during her coming out ball. And so he takes her out on a balcony and kisses her. And then they proceed to elope that night. Like, they are, like, so immediately – this was – I almost did it for Wonderland, too, for reasons. Uh, But, like, uh they so immediately are, like, we are in love. Her family, like, her father, like, disowns her. She hasn't had Mm -hmm. contact with them. And for it, like, they go off. They live a very scandalous life because he's very scandalous and she wants to, like, live up to that. Um, He's an artist. But the problem is he's also, like, an alcoholic who disappears for months at a time to go to the continent to, like, paint and stuff because he has this – he's, like, afraid that his abusive father's tendencies are going to show up in him. So there's all of this going on. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's very, like, like fiery passion, but then they'll fight and then he'll disappear without really telling her. And so all of this accumulates in her being, like, I love you, but this is going to kill me. Um, Post it. Something really tragic happens. Mm -hmm. And so she finally is, like, no, I'm leaving you. Um, they stay married, but they separate. And the thing that I find so fa- – I have a lot to say about this book, actually. I find it so fascinating that the whole book, they constantly tell each other they love each other, even though they're not together, because they know mm-hmm. that that was not the issue. Mm. And they they are openly li- – anyway, so now it's like seven years later or something. I don't know. Years later, she's still close with his family. She shows up in his house. He's trying to paint a naked woman. It's not going well for him. She shows up and is like, hey, somebody is trying to pass off forgeries, like – or, like, paintings that they are claiming are yours. And he's mm. like, I don't really care. But it turns out she really cares. So he decides that he's like, oh, she's back. And I am still in love with her. So I am going to get my wife back. Uh, I'm going to investigate these forged paintings. Not because I care, <laughs> but because it means I can... Ha- and he just, like, the entire book finds reason. Like, his house burns down. And he just shows up at her house with all of his servants. And is like, we have to Amazing. stay here. And she's like, no, you don't. And he's like, yes, I do. Whoops, I have to. And they're, like, traveling with her family, or his family, rather, for a lot of the book. And they're all besties. And then at one point, there's this whole little running bit where he starts, like, (laughs) he's like, hey, I have this friend who's really bad at courting. What would you tell him to, like, to properly court someone? And she knows what he's doing, but she plays along with the bit anyway. And so kind of this running bit throughout is, like, her telling him the advice to tell his friend on how to properly court a lady and then him doing it to her. So it is literally how you get the girl. Like, this is just this large Scottish man being like, did I fuck up? Yes. Am I now going to annoy my wife into loving me? Also, yes. And he does. (laughs) And it was excellent. And in fact, if you look at my review, it was a, um, this is a fuck it five stars situation. Oh, hell yeah. Where I finished and I was like, you know what? Maybe it doesn't fully deserve the five stars, but I'm giving it to him, giving him to it. Anyway, whatever. You get it. <laughs> so, I love when that happens. There you have it. Onward. This love. Onward. Mm-hmm. A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. Oh, yeah. It's soft. It's tender. It's not second chance, but they grew up as childhood friends, and then she f- basically faked her own death in a war so that she could, like, live as herself. But she didn't tell him that she had faked her own death. Mm-hmm. So he was just depressed, and so they had to let the love go free, but then it came back um, different than, yeah. than it was before. It was just very soft. It was such a soft book. And the Jack Scallion. <laughs> oh. Like rap scallion, but he I, was Jack. We know. <laughs> I still weep in the dark. Uh, I did. Uh, I did again. The magic. 
mm. by Lisa Claypis. That's a good one. Um, yeah, I just the whole this love is good, this love is bad, this love is a lead back from the dead. She didn't know if like he was alive, if he was dead. This love left a permanent mark. They yep. both got permanent marks, man. Yep. Um, lots of things happened. Very angsty, very romantic. Um, I also like so that's since again the magic has two romances. I it was like it was hard for me to place it because I thought it was gonna be another one because I thought the secondary romance kind of fit for another mm. one. But I went back once I placed again the magic in this love and like cleaned up some other things. Like that's when my Rex kind of like came into line. It was when I was really sticking it into the one bucket that just didn't quite fit, um, and I was having a hard time. Um, so yeah, that one just really um like embodies I mean the, strictly speaking the, the secondary romance could work for this love also mhm because they have to go or right like separate she's like you have to right get better mhm just a very angsty dramatic time but also incredibly romantic especially when she's like you won't love me and he's like i am offended he's so angry he's so mad <laughs> oh mckenna yeah what a scene he said actually i'm going to have sex with you right now i'm mm. so mad at you Mm-hmm. and he did and he, he did, did. Mm. Mm. so good i know places <laughs> this <laughs> um i did the wolf and the wildflower by stacy reed um have you haven't read that one yet no um that's the one yeah. where he goes um like spelunking or whatever i don't know that's the right word he just like goes traveling in like alaska or somewhere cold with caves and mountains <laughs> i don't know why you would do that back then like i just couldn't be me um but he does and then he gets lost in the wilderness of like around alaska alaska-esque climate uh for 10 years so for 10 years he's been literally raised by wolves um and they all think he's dead. And then they find him. And he has to be rehabilitated um, because he is basically part wolf at this point. I just have a theory Stacy really wanted to write a shifter romance but didn't want to have to deal with, like, all of the world changing things. So she's like, fuck it. I'm going to make this guy raised by wolves. We're going to Tarzan it. And he's going to, like, love doing it from behind. Because that's how <laughs> wolves do it. And And she did. She wrote it. And I have to support her because then the heroine has been living as a man for her entire life because her father was desperate to have an heir. The mother could not handle another pregnancy. And so the mother was like, he didn't see the baby. It's a boy. Um, And so the father literally never knew. So she's like had to like did a lot of like psychological damage. I'm a historical romance father. (laughs) I'm gonna force my wife to have babies until I have an heir. <laughs> Literally. Like, he wasn't, like, a terrible guy, like, after, like, in the present, but in the past. And even then, I'm like, bro, I hate you. Um, And so, like, but they're psychologists. And so she's, like, hired. She's, like, his apprentice. So she's, like, hired with the father to go help um, the Duke, like – reacclimate himself to society when he doesn't want to it's his family who wants it um and it turns like it's a wild premise a lot of things happen but it's also just like they just create places for themselves to just like go and be together um they kind of say fuck it to everyone like they don't care like it's just like he like sends her like through like through walls like they're like in like a joined root like just joined not rooms, but like there's senses work. No, but remember, he's part wolf. I don't know if that's how wolf sentences work either, but he's like, I smell your arousal. Um and there's like a scene where he like shows up at the ball, dances with her one time, and then just like leaves. And like she's dressed like she's like in a dress because she's always dressed as a man. And so when she's finally able to dress as a woman, like no one knows who she is. So then they're like, who the hell did this, like, wolf duke just come dance with and then leave? It, dramatic. I was n- not prepared for it. Um, <laughs> I just think the theme of I know places we can hide and go have crazy wolf sex um, is the theme of that one. Like, all of it was from behind. Like, so much. 
<laughs> like, I just, <laughs> a shocking amount. <laughs> but it was so fun. I love Stacy. I love her so much. <laughs> like, no one else could have done it. <laughs> like, mm. um, I also chose to interpret I Know Places very literally. Listen, listen, I went with Scandalous Desires by Elizabeth <laughs> Hoyt because specifically, very specifically, he had a place, he knew a place where they could go hide from people who were trying to throw whatever that acid on them was. <laughs> the acid. The acid. Yeah. He said, don't worry, babe. I've got <laughs> an estate, like a country manor. Where everybody, I have an alter ego and no one knows who I actually am. And we can go hang out there. I know places and I'm just a crazy respectable... wolf check and hide from acid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm just a respectable boat shipbuilder. Yeah, you are. Go you. He knew places. A place, specifically. One. He knew also erogenous places. Nice. So true. Thank charming you. Mickey. Mm. He was charming. He was charming. Um, clean is hard. I yeah. chose to interpret it, uh, not strictly in the truest sense of the song. Um, yeah. Well, that mean, how do you even, like, I don't even. Yeah, because the problem is if it's a second chance romance, you don't want them to be fully clean. Yeah, it was hard. So instead, I, I went with Devil's Daughter by Lisa Kleypas because mm, number one, he's clean in the literal sense. Like, he's no longer an alcoholic. Yay. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Daddy West. Number two, she's finally, like, emotionally moved on from her dead husband. Well, that's a good one. Um, which, again, isn't, like, the whole, like, kind of toxic relationship moving on thing, but just the, like, here is a past mm-hmm. relationship that I have now moved on from and I'm ready to have mm-hmm. some sex well, with even a guy like, who Seb- really deserves these children. Yeah, Sebastian's even, like... I loved your last husband, but he, you weren't, like, fully, like, who you could be with. Like, she lived, yeah. like, a completely different life with him. Um, I know Sebastian has, like, a And you could be banging a really hot farmer mm. gentleman who's really into food and you and raising your children. As he should be. And Nobody's doing it like Daddy was. Him. Was it dad that he called him? And yeah, and we're all gonna cry about it in uh, chasing Cassandra. Yep, that, yep, that yep. did a number on me. Yep, it still hurt. does. Yep. Just thinking hurt, about it hurt this heart, and it did a number on him too because he's crying. He just started crying. Yeah, I do love him. Mm. Ugh, I'm unwell. Delicious. Me too. Again, this one I was like, I don't know. Um, so I went, I went back to my queen, Lorraine Heath, and I did once more, my darling rogue. Um, that book is like historical overboard, basically. Um, she has always like shunned him and, um, not been the nicest to him. And, uh, he is like a family friend. Like she is friends with his sister. He's adopted, but his adopted sister and uh, the adoption is crucial because it happens in, like, another book. And then he, like, loves his father. So then he, like, gets a huge dragon tattoo on his back, which is also <laughs> pertinent to things. Of because then she bathes it. Um, it. Yeah, a lot happens. And so um, they all, they just don't like each other. And he's miffed that she doesn't like him. He's like, well, you think you're better than I am? She's, like, a full lady. Uh, a full lady. She's just a lady. Like, different so- social standings. Um, so then he finds her passed out in like a ditch, um, because, you know, like an overboard, like she ends up like going overboard and she ends up getting a head injury in this one. You don't know how she ended up there. It was like after the ball at the beginning of the book. And so he's like, well, I'm just going to like take her home. I don't know how she like got here. And then he has the incredibly smart idea to pretend that she's his housekeeper for a little light revenge. And then he has, like, I mean, that's not a great intention, but then he has, like, some good intentions of, like, going to her brother and being, like, are you missing her? And the brother's, like, no. So he's, like, well, I don't want to give her back to the brother, like, if she doesn't remember who she is. And, like, he could be bad. So then he kind of just, like, keeps her, but also he's already told her she's his housekeeper. And she, like, knows, like, she feels in her body that that's not right because she's, like, 
get like she's like you make like draw me a bath like you do all this he's like no you're my housekeeper it's like funny and then she's like dealing with things that you don't know about and she doesn't know about because she has amnesia (laughs) and it you know that book it's i think it's like my favorite lorraine heath book it just it works and is it clean i don't know um (laughs) I think in my sense, it's kind of a spoiler, so I can't quite say, but she's able to, like, do a lot of things when she has amnesia um, because she, she, like, wouldn't, like, there were things that she wouldn't let herself do before and you know why, like, you find out why she, like, was shitty to him and, like, always kind of, like, had, like, a very self-possessed, like, air about her and he ends up feeling real bad. Um, and uh, also she gives him a bath and he got clean. (laughs) And I think he also gave her a bath and she got clean and then they had sex. So. A literal interpretation. Quite literal, I will say. I took some liberties. (laughs) Um, but what a good book. And I, like, it would make sense, like, if you read it or you do read it, like, I don't even really like the, that she's clean. Like, it's not that she's clean, but it's that she just, like, she can, like, realize that she's not. I don't know. Um, but it, oh, I love it. So, terrible me describing <laughs> how it relates to the song. But I think it, I think it does if you try hard enough. <laughs> Um, for Wonderland, I, (laughs) I chose Touch of Enchantment by Teresa Medeiros. Mm. Now, is it fully historical? No. She's, she's born in the 20th century. But she does go back in time. (laughs) And she ends up right next to a wounded, like, knight who falls off his horse and is like, ooh, I'm wounded. And she's like, ooh, you're kind of clean for being a knight. You know things you say. (laughs) When you fall, when you fall off a horse, <laughs> well, it's just very like she's like talking to him, and then she's like, "What is going on?" And he just like pfft, falls off the horse, and so she's like lug him, and he's being chased. It's a whole thing. Um, it's book two, so like you definitely have to read book one. Um, which that could also be Wonderland because she's in like a whole Wonderland. Like she goes to the the twentieth century, or is that would be the 1900 yeah so then maybe she's in the 20 so the, this daughter's in the 21st in book one it's the 20th century um and so she just goes back in time falls down the rabbit hole uh he is like what who are you what are you like she is in pajamas talks about big Macs. He's very confused. She gets outed as a witch, and he's like, literally, you're a witch. I have to burn you at the stake. Like, <laughs> you're a witch. And then um, he's very confused. New- he's close. There's a dragon. Um, he's very confused, but he's also like, you're very hot. Um, things happen. I'm it's a romance a very hero. Great- <laughs> I'm going to try to burn you at the stake, but also think you're hot on your own. Literally, he was so, he was, like, very conflicted about it, but he was close to doing it. And then she started crying. He's like, witches can't cry. (laughs) What are you? (laughs) It was, a lot was happening. That also happened in Lady Pirate um, by, no, by uh, Lindsay Sands. Um, She's literally, like, very close to, like, hanging him by the neck off her ship like very close it really do um yeah because she thinks that he's going to turn them in for um keeping treasure from the crown and he wasn't but she didn't know that she didn't talk to him about it so he was like very close to just being murdered by her and she was feeling very bad about it but she was gonna do it and then um she's like well our only recourse is to get married because then you can't turn (laughs) so the 11th hour she gets him real drunk they get married they end up on a deserted island and she has to have sex with him and it's great it was so good he's like what is happening but it was good so two for the price of one for that one (laughs) but really uh touch of enchantment they're just in a crazy wonderland the entire time yeah big yawn 
big yawn. Yeah. Um, you sound like me talking to my cat. Um, yeah, Wonderland. Uh, I went with the the once again the forbidden aspect. Um, of like we're not really supposed to be together, and as soon as people start to suspect something, it's gonna be bad. Mm-hmm. Um, forbidden by Beverly no. Jenkins. Yeah, they forgot they they forgot that this could not last forever um because he is uh, uh passing as white and mm-hmm. she cannot because she is dark skinned um also i'm pretty sure he has green eyes mm-hmm. um which ties into the song so yeah. that's it's forbidden they go a little bit mad they fall down the rabbit hole and then things go badly from there. Because but then it's a romance. And they thought they were alone. But uh, there were strangers watching. And whispers turned to talking. Whispers turned to talking. And talking talk talk and 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 did turn to screams. It didn't go well. Mm-mm. But it's fine because they fell in love. And there was an HEA. So, forbidden. Yep. Uh, you are in love. Not me not remembering what the song was. Uh, I'm like, why did I pick this book? <laughs> we could be so good by Cat Sebastian. Yeah, this is another just like it's very soft. It gives the like friends to lovers vibes, mainly because of the lyric where he says, "You're my best friend." And that you, one, I, I oh. think I had, I contemplated that one. Um, I just so feel right. like it could be in the background yeah. of that whole book when they're hanging out. Incredible. Yeah, it's such a soft. Literally just friends falling in love. Um. It's unfair how soft it was. So soft. And just them falling in love. And also, it it has the vibes of, like, they don't have to say it to know. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say about that. Also set in New York. You're so right. Um, I had this one, and I didn't touch it. Like, I had this one so long ago, um, and I just left it there. Uh, It's How to Be a Wallflower by Eloisa James. Um, My reaction to first reading that book was absolutely unhinged um i like it was just so like they were so in love (laughs) and i was like not okay it was like five i pulled an all-nighter which was unwise because i was incoherent um but like just the little things of jacob astor addison um i mean the little i mean he's big he's a big thing but like the little things that he did up to just like get her to fall in love with him and to just like see that she is in love with him like i mean he started the book with a woman he was going to propose to so like so soon he was like no (laughs) bye love that that's the only way i support um and in the song coffee his place uh or like breakfast something um breakfast is like a huge thing between them like they just end up just like eating breakfast together all the time um because he loves kippers and at the end he loves her more than Kipper's, which was just – it decimated me. It really took me out. Doesn't sound great right now, but in context, it hurts in a good way. I just really felt like they were two people who could just sit in the same room in silence and just be content. Now that I think of it, one by Eva Devon. what was that? He, like, buys her a chair – to just like have a reading chair next to him. Um, that also gives those vibes one second, just so I don't mislead you. Cause I truly don't know what that was called. Uh, the spinster and the rake. Cause like at the beginning, it's a whole thing. Like she's sitting in his chair, but by the end, like they just have two chairs and they can just sit together forever. Takes me out. Mm. Oh. Well, new romantics. Here's a New York one. I did The Duke It's Even by Joanna Shoup. Mm -hmm. I just feel like Nellie is a real big new romantic. Um, Like the Scarlet Letters, just kind of like not giving a fuck. Uh, Building a castle up, all the bricks they threw at her. Um, Yeah, I loved them together. And I just feel like – because I also had like The Bride Goes Rogue. Like I feel like that entire like friend group because I was like looking for something with like a friend group that could – like show up to a party and just kind of like have at it and that happens in book two um nelly and what's her name so sorry 
they show up and then she gets absolutely uh pleasured by that guy <laughs> which is also hot because then in that book nelly the duke sees nelly and he's like real jealous because she's with like an artist guy and he's like Rrr. and then um they like talk about it in book three no book four it's book four i forget book one exists i forgot that you existed um yeah i just feel like nelly really gives new romantic uh this is my bombshell pick mm, uh, yeah that's what, yeah. also gives new romantic the whole friend mm-hmm. group also gives um mm-hmm. every day is like a battle literally but every night with this mm-hmm. is like a dream yeah uh yeah they give new romantics vibes um and cecily specifically is like <laughs> i am here to have a good time <laughs> So there you have it. Slut! So true. <laughs> it has an exclamation point. Um, I went unclaimed by Courtney Milan, and it makes me unhinged because the more I, I think about part. it, the more perfectly it lines up with the song. Yeah. Just like the entire, because nobody even knows that she, okay, wait, premise, she's a courtesan, she's hired to like, mm seduce this guy because he literally wrote the book on chastity and so he's he like a celebrity he, he did wrote it. he it did for it but he would mean for it to get famous and so now he's accidentally famous for not having sex and he's like i mean none of you guys get what chastity really is about which was hot uh-huh. um i love him but anyway mm. so she's hired by a rival to seduce him and therefore undermine him but she can't because he's into her, but he also understands that, like, chastity is about, like, you feel desire. You just have to say no. Anyway, she's he's very in meme him. where that guy is, like, his – the veins are popping out of his head and he's just, like – True. But he like, resists. Was, so, yeah. Um. Anyway, but everybody – like, even though nobody knows in this town that she's a courtesan, they do know she's a slut. <laughs> like – and I say that lovingly, but they all slut shame her constantly. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's like, okay, bet. Like, I'm going to look really good and I'm going to seduce you. You're not saying you're in love with me, but you're going to. Mm-hmm. But then she gets love struck because in a world of boys, he's a gentleman. It's just all, it's all coming together. So now every time I listen to the song, that's all I can you're think a about. Mastermind. I am a mastermind. Ugh. Yeah, I that book was so fun. I wish there was an audiobook because I would reread it so fast. I just love that Courtney was like, I'm going to write a superstar like romance, but he's going to be a superstar because he wrote a book on chastity. It was just so like the camp looking it straight in the eye. Um, I chose Seduction of a Highland Lass by Maya Banks. This one, quite literally, she's not a slut, but she was slut shamed so terribly that she had to leave her clan. Um because the uh chief guy whatever what would clan the the chief uh what is what he? is the is he not a chief i don't is remember he? i don't know um that sounds maybe wrong it, it does it doesn't sound right the... what is the leader of a highland clan i'm google laird I don't wanna... laird oh i knew there was a okay yep okay um, because the, the Laird try he was basically a pedophile and tried to rape her. And so the wife found him like pawing oh, at her. Oh, yes, yes. This is the second in a series, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. I've read the third. Um, mm, I read the third too. Yeah. Um, and the wife like found her and instead of like blaming the husband, she's like, you're a slut. Um, you were trying to seduce my husband. So you have to go. And then her best friend was like the daughter of those two. So then it was like very dramatic um so she just like had to leave she's been like living on her own she's a healer and then um the, the rival uh they rivals like come up to her house and basically the hero is like wounded and she has to like treat him and they kind of like kidnap her um <laughs> they do and- kind of kidnap her also <laughs> and just quite frequently throughout the book she's just like you know what it'd be worth it for once to be called a slut if i can you know have him because he is fully engaged to her former best friend um and she's like you know it would be it, it's worth it and um and then the people in like the like that he's the he's the, the thero of- the her- the thero wow <laughs> the hero of the third book right him? isn't he the one that 
everybody no. keeps getting engaged to. What what is I thought she the the hero of book two is the guy who's engaged to the heroine of book three. Oh, the heroine is the one who keeps yeah. getting passed over. I couldn't remember which yeah. is which. That poor girl. Yep. I know. Um so he like because they get all the way because I read this one because I wanted to do for the style. I wanted to find an interrupted wedding one. Um this this wedding does get interrupted um because they're under attack and she's like running to them and then she gets shot oh um so then he's like i can't marry you goes and saves her and so it was dramatic in that sense (laughs) um because she was like gonna give him up and it was angsty um but really she was ready to be a slut for him and it was like very hot it was they just had so much sex after that she committed to that um also the cover I think they, like, edited out her nipple because, like, she's fully, like, her boob is just there. Like, I don't quite know how that got through. Um, But if you look at it, it's just, like, blurred, like, up at the top. (laughs) I'm just, like, you know. Uh, Yeah, I love that song. Um, It was my, it was my favorite, but now, um, say, well, I don't know if say don't go, I don't know. It's so hard. Um, But I do love say don't go um because you just want to say say so true go um this one came to me on a just an inspiration it's i thought you were gonna say it came to you in a dream and i was really excited it didn't um no i can't say that it did that's a bummer yeah but carry on bringing (laughs) oh bringing down the duke by evie dunmore um I really wanted one that had, like, a very dramatic, Mm. like, he just wasn't going to tell her to stay, even though, like, they both loved each other. And um, she knew it was kind of doomed. He was kind of, like, in denial. And then it – I feel like a lot of us have read this book, but if you don't know, um, she – like, a lot of the book happens. (laughs) They (laughs) – You know, they're very, like, they're lusting for each other. They're very well suited. Um, They have a night when he's like, be my mistress. And she's like, no, that's insulting. And then she finally, she's like, but I do kind of want to sleep with you still. He thinks that she's going to, like, she's agreeing to be his mistress. She's like, no, I won't do it. So then she leaves. Um, He's, he kind of just lets her because he's like, well, I can't marry you because you're not of my social class and he's kind of a little bit of a jerk about it but it's fine because his name's sebastian and he's hot um but like there's like another scene where he like tries to get her back but he still doesn't like offer marriage and she's just like you could say like it's very easy for you to have me like if you would just say that you're gonna like want me for your wife and he just doesn't so then she dramatically goes again and then he has to he has to finally get her back that third time um i mean but yeah i feel like fourth time because he does try again and it goes badly for him oh yeah he falls off a fucking oh he he falls off a horse gets a head injury he's like ah it struck me he's so slay and then he like goes up to her he's like i have a head injury i can marry you now and she's like what are you talking about go home and then he's, like, all drunk. And his brother's like, what's wrong? He's like, I, I, uh, she said no. He's like, well, you told her that you were, like, wounded in the head and that's when you could finally, like, love her? And he's like, oh. Oh, Sebastian. I, have, I hope his name is Sebastian. It I is. really do. Because it's the Duke blonde Duke. It's my blonde Duke. Same name Sebastian. And yours is St. Vincent. Um. So, yeah. I just wanted one that, like, he really at any point could have just said, marry me. Um and he never did and she was uh was it i'll be your yours but you're not mine Mm. um that kind of thing and i just love the kiss me and it stops time part of that song that Um, that verse is excellent oh it gets me it does unlock something in me yeah uh it's particularly the screaming in the background (sighs) of i said i love you no one talked to me ever again anyway uh listen mine's a role reversal it's uh because i was really stuck on it being the heroine Mm -hmm. walking out 
but it's mm-hmm. not. In Marry Me by Midnight by Felicia Grossman, I mm. went back and I reread the scene because I was like, I swear to God, this happens in this book and I couldn't remember. I don't think I said this earlier. I work for forever. Disclaimer. Mm. Um. Anyway, Marry Me by Midnight. It's like a Cinderella gender swapped Jewish historical romance situation. He's been collecting blackmail for her suitors that she's trying to choose for business reasons. It's a whole thing. Um, Mm -hmm. And towards the end of this book, things go badly for her. And she shows up at his little um, room beneath the synagogue where he lives feeding birds and mice and such. Uh, and she basically freaks out and is like, none of this is going the way that I wanted it to. Like, they're going to outplay me, blah, blah, blah. And like, I don't even want to marry them and all this stuff. And she's trying to like get him to make her feel better. And he is having none of it. And he is so mad at her. And he's like, Mm -hmm. I don't know what you want me to say. Um, but I'm not going to be the one to say it. Like, you have to tell me essentially literally Mm -hmm. goading her to be like you have to say you love me i'm going to america like my boat is leaving before this festival i'm leaving and she's like why and he's like why do you think like i i can't be the one because he's like a custodian and she's like a Mm -hmm. business owner um so he literally is like it's i can't be the one to say it and he's so mad at her Mm -hmm. uh and then she tries to pay him for his service, you know, because he's been doing stuff for her. And he's like, I don't want your money. Um, <laughs> I got this just for you. Keep your money. But he's offering blackmail on suitors. Um, and it's just so – and she ends up leaving and he do- he leaves. And there's, like, a very dramatic – like, they have to go chase him down and get him to come back and all this stuff. Um, but I reread the scene and it really is so – like, he is waiting for her to say – don't go like stay and be with me and she doesn't because she can't she's not there yet Mm -hmm. he's like "Mm, okay yeah like like, this one had to hurt you know and it did it hurt yeah because like the song you're just like yeah and the way she sings it yeah oh what a good song so true it gets stuck (sighs) in my head um speaking of songs that get stuck in my head now that we don't talk, oh god, I love this song so much. All of these songs, like what did they're you all in? that classic Taylor Swift thing where like you're crying, <laughs> but you're but also you're like, like bopping. You want to, yeah, yeah. I'm like, why am I dancing? But also devastated. Mm-hmm. Um, now that we don't mm-hmm. talk, I also this unlocked something in me when I paired these because I got so excited about how well it fits. Third Degree Yearn by Lainey Hatcher mm. uh, is. They grew up to get – he was the son of their housekeeper, third nobility of some kind. I don't remember what level, but nobility. Uh, and he's the son of their housekeeper, but his mom is kind of terrible. So he mm-hmm. spent most of his childhood growing up with the kids, and, like, the family is kind of unconventional and very loving. So, like, they literally did treat him like one of his own uh, – one of their own, but he never quite felt like he fit in there because his mom was really telling him, like, you're the housekeeper's son. Anyway, he was best friends with – the youngest daughter uh and they grew up and they were very very close and then his mom sent him away to some like stable i think it was like his uncle ran like a horse breeding business and so at like 15 or something sent him away uh and they basically they both send each other letters but Mm -hmm. because of interference neither of them ever gets any of the letters Uh. so both of them think for years that the other person just completely forgot about them. The difference being he stopped writing letters after like a couple of months and she continued for years to write letters. Um, But like they were best friends, but she, by the time he left, knew that there were more feelings there, but he didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, But then he gets the letters and now, oh, and now he's back because he's working with, she's staying with her sister and he's working with the sister's husband. So like they're Mm -hmm. in the same vicinity again and they're mad at each other. But there's also a lot of, like, hurt feelings. But then they realize what's happened. And then they're trying to, like, kind of be friends again. But they're also into each other. Anyway, this whole idea of, like, well, I can't be your friend. Uh, Like, coming to terms with what you've lost. Like, the whole, like, now we Mm -hmm. don't talk. And so you're doing all these things. And I'm watching from the outside as you, like, run your horse breeding business and work with my brother-in-law. But we don't talk. So I have nothing to say. (laughs) And it hit so hard the only thing that doesn't quite match is the little petty part at the end that i love so much where she's like mm, i, I don't got have that. to pretend yeah like acid rock that doesn't quite work um 
But the rest of it of like, oh, it's a friend breakup Mm -hmm. because the song feels like a friend breakup to me. Mm -hmm. But also there were feelings there. It's not platonic. It's just ended. (laughs) I think mine actually pretty much – I think it works for the petty moment Um, just because of how like the book opens. Um, (laughs) They were childhood friends. They were like really good friends. Definitely like either had like a little romance or everyone thought it was going to happen. Um. And he's the Duke. She's some, she's, I believe, a lady. Um, and basically, it's a little bit Indiana Jones. Um, it, it is, I was going to just start saying the plot before I even say what it is. Uh, it's for the Duke size only um, by Lenora Bell. Um, it was just like a very fun book. Um, it opens with them being at like this like gentleman's club and um she's like in disguise and he's looking for like they're both like like artifacts and like going to different locations and stuff and like jet setting and everything um and she thinks like he like stopped talking to her like randomly um and he she doesn't know he's a spy so as spies are wont to do they kind of have to stop talking to people because of danger uh she didn't know that so he just becomes a spy and he's doing all these things he's like maybe growing his hair long maybe getting new icons um because he has to like fit a role and like be like a very like pretentious like very kind of like dumb Mm. duke who doesn't know what he like the value of artifacts and everything um because i think the whole thing is like there are like artifacts missing from somewhere that they have to like go rescue and so she like sneaks into it he recognizes her there's like sexual tension um but she's just like very miffed at him because she doesn't know why they stopped talking um she thinks that he's just like doing this for all the wrong reasons she doesn't know like his motives he doesn't know hers um and they they just kind of like go places and do things (laughs) and have good 69 times um go places check (laughs) do things yeah so Not. this one really <laughs> – it really hits on the – she, like, thinks his new, like, persona is just completely fake and she's just disgusted by it. Um, but then she's turned on when she realizes that it is fake. Um, and then he's always been the same guy who had to stop talking to her. So Slam. that was a fun one. Uh, suburban Legends – or I should say dot, 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 <laughs> Suburban Legends. Um I chose The Secret Lives of Country Gentlemen by K.J. Charles. Um, You know, they weren't there to make friends. They just wanted to fuck. Um, (laughs) I just think, like, they just feel very, like, urban legendy. I don't know, like, the vibes of that book just feel very uh, mismatched star signs, like, two very different people from, like, two very different places. like trying to make it work and like trying to just like be in love um this one was another hard one i was like i don't quite know um but i just i think the mismatched but very well matched um under all of it but this one was hard i don't know i have now that we don't talk stuck in my head (laughs) i was like you're you're dancing you got a bop to it Mm -hmm. You gotta – the chorus of that – I'm going back to now that we don't talk just because the chorus of that scratches an itch in my – the – oh, my mom, she said to get it up. The way it goes up, Mm -hmm. oh, scratches an itch in my brain every time. Anyway, Mm -hmm. Suburban Legends, which is one that I didn't love when I – I thought it was fine, but now Mm -hmm. that I've listened to it, gotten Mm -hmm. better. Uh, Puts me in a way that's going to screw me up. I don't even love, like, the the story of the song, but the – just hearing it – Anyway, Mm -hmm. um, this song reads to me as uh, like a childhood or young relationship that you really Mm -hmm. wanted to make work, but both of you had other things that you had to go do, Uh, and so it just did not quite work out, although the book I chose, it does eventually work out, and that is A Rogue to Remember (coughs) by Emily Mm -hmm. Sullivan, which doesn't work out because of meddling from other people, but nevertheless... Mm -hmm. um, I think he was like the ward of her uncle or something. It was another like yeah. they grew up together situation, um, the and the feelings were there. To her. 
Yeah, the feelings were there, and then he also became a spy. What is it about becoming spies? Um, But she doesn't – or, no, she does know. It's not that he became a spy. He went into, like, government service doing something or other. So she does know that because it's her uncle that gets him into it, but – Oh, yeah. Um, But still – She still doesn't know why he left. Yeah, Yeah. he just kind of leaves, and she doesn't know why, and then she's off trying to, like – fake a scandalous elopement so that she can go live in Italy and mind her business and then he comes to get her and then it's a cross country Mm. Italian road trip Um, Mm. and it just gives the vibes of like you don't knock anymore Mm. Um, and my whole life's ruined and also you kiss me in a way that's gonna screw me up forever but um, it it gives that like childhood friends that you thought Mm -hmm. but then they didn't come here to make friends. They were mm-hmm. born to be suburban legends. That's so true. Yeah, the you don't knock anymore. Like for mine, definitely. Like, the bridge like, what you, what hits you so hard. Yeah, I broke my own heart because you were too polite, too to, polite do to do it. Do it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, on to my actual favorite song, possibly out of the I know that's album. why I'm. I'm like. I love Say Don't Go, but I'm just like, do I love it more than it Nothing is it over now? Like, I don't like, know. Is it over now? I will listen oh. to that song in a loop. It doesn't matter. Red, blue, white snow. The uh. entire, what, pre-chorus? The d- yeah. Did You Think I Wouldn't See You? There were flashing lights. Oh, my that God. Sequence. I feel like I'm, like, the hottest person ever when I'm singing The rage that, that I channel as if this mm. has ever happened to me. Anyway, listen, mm. have I used this book on one of these before? Yes, I have. Could I think of a better one? No, I couldn't. Private Arrangements, Sherry Thomas. That was my one, yeah. I. It's not mine, but that was my backup. It is Co-sign. so, like, they're both, like, sleeping with other people, mm-hmm. but the f- and they're so angry at each other, and he's, like, flaunting it, and she's mad about it, but they're mm-hmm. still, like, the feelings are so there. They are there. So many feelings. I ju- And what really gets me is that I feel like Sherry Thomas is the There's only writer. Too. That's true. There is a boat. Mm, blue dress on a boat. And then, like, he sees her. Yeah. And then she sees him, and then she was, like, he was going to go apologize, and then he sees her with another guy, and then he's, like, oh. So that was, like, his final straw. Like, yeah. he saw her. Oh, God. Mm. And then, oh, like, well. the you dream of my mouth before it called you a lying traitor. Yeah. It's so yeah. – and they both are so – I, I feel like nobody yeah. – I could have put a Sherry Thomas book for, like, all of these songs. I don't yeah. – because Ravishing the Heiress, I almost did for – um. I think I was going to do it for Say Don't Go. It doesn't quite fit because she wasn't going to walk out necessarily, but she was going to let him go. Mm, mm-hmm. I, it, I don't – listen, Sherry Thomas just gets the, like, kind of problematic, we're sleeping with other people but into each other, but we can't admit our feelings and now we're angry. The uh, Luckiest Lady in London, I feel like, also has 1989 that, I vibes. I have that one as, like, backups for several. Yeah. It and I'm just, just like, so... Yeah. Sherry Thomas. I think I, I have it. it. I have it for, like, one, I think, on, like, Folklore or something. I don't know. It's Evermore. Um, so I've been, like, saving it for that. We've got a whole long time before that's ever going to happen. But... But Sherry Thomas... Um, Sherry Thomas mm. and Taylor Swift are besties. I just – like, they don't know each other, but in my soul, they are besties. Um, so, yeah, agree. Private Arrangements and Is It Over Now will – is a combination that will just make me mm-hmm. – it, uh, it'll throw me deep into my feels. And then to combine that with The Day of the Duchess by Sarah McLean, mm. um, which is my pick, mm-hmm. I think is just – it all hurts. <laughs> um, this one, I just love the – um, if she has a blue eyes, I will surmise that she'll probably date her. Mm. Um, because I did some investigation. <laughs> I investigated via um, a plea on Instagram because I didn't have the ebook. Um, the woman that he was fucking by the fountain had blue eyes. Um, so that's just very critical to everything that I stand for. Um, this like she wasn't sleeping with other people. He thought she was. He, she yeah, should have been. She was because like women empowerment. Um, but like it's fine. But he thought she was, and that one just like again, like you said that earlier, like it could have went a lot of different places. It also could have been. I kind of wanted to put it for Suburban Legends just because her nickname was TikTok, and then the song goes TikTok on the clock. It doesn't fit the song, um, but I thought it was just funny. Um, but basically, like they 
got married um and then they were in an unhappy marriage <laughs> that's it and also she does fully walk in on him fucking another woman by a fountain yeah well and then his sister well sure uh which pushes him into the fountain the first and then book. it's the first but, like yeah. that whole did you think i wouldn't see you like yeah they were flat like yeah and he's like well yeah that that was the point he's like um, that is correct and i don't even believe you're carrying my child <laughs> like he was so awful yeah. in that he was he was so horrible i am i am lucky that i read because i just went balls deep into this book before mm. reading the other ones in the series because i don't know if i could have gotten over it as well as i did it was intense um, if i would have read book one before this because i really did want to get a rubber hose and beat him with it um but in the set like in the third one like when you if you just start there you're kind of like over it <laughs> like it's like when you read over Devil now? in Winter without reading and yeah. happened one autumn and that's you're what like, happened he to doesn't me. Seem so bad. <laughs> that's what happened to me. I did that too. Um, yeah. So like, was it my favorite book ever? No, but it was very good. I will give Sarah McLean props because I mean, not a lot of times. Easy. No. Um, to come back just, from just that man blatantly cheating on Paige yeah. and maliciously. And intentionally. Yeah. But then, like, it wasn't – obviously, it wasn't good reasoning. And, like, yeah, I don't did. support that. Yeah, but you read but about like, why he did it and you're like, oh. Exactly. And then, like, you – like, it may – and then he never, like, touched anyone for, like, the next, like, however many years. Um, And then, like, because, like, he, like – oh, God. There's, like, a scene where he – she's, like, giving birth, but it's, like – uh he like carries her in and it's a whole thing and i mean that book will devastate you red blood white snow guys i know there's no snow but oh god yeah it hurt um yeah i i don't i think she did it really well of like he just really regretted it from the time it happened all the way through and he was like visibly like like he you knew that he felt bad because eloisa james has one like the his duchess or something i don't know um where he does the same thing like he like fucks a lady on his desk at work because his father had like weird proclivities and so he's like if i fuck a very conventionally like normal mistress while i'm married people will think that i am not like my father which was just a very bad reasoning for him and i don't support him at all in that sense but like she then was like okay well whatever i'm gonna go so she sleeps with other people like it's like oh i think um like so they live estranged for a while and come back to it like it wasn't the worst book i've ever read but his reasoning in this one was a lot better (laughs) when you're kind of just like i feel for you bro um yeah i was found in the in the ditch lost control so that book did a number and we've reached Sweeter than fiction. Mm. I didn't even realize she was going to put this one on. I didn't realize it was like 1989 time um, when it came out. But I just chose Forever Your Rogue by Aaron Langston and never looked back. <laughs> I don't like it just was like, oh, that could work. And then I didn't touch it again. Um, So I just think like because he starts like very low and like very – um down on his luck like at the beginning and she he's like her only option um she's trying to get custody of the two kids and um the awful family members are trying to get it from her and the only way she could gain it is to have like a a husband like a fiance which sucks for her because like the one that she chooses him he has a terrible reputation and she has to like they have to like build that back up um and she had done like a favor for him she like bailed him out like years prior and she was like the only one who like believed in him um and that just turns out into a like a very sweet book of him just like kind of like daddy westing it up west daddy westing it up um and i just think that she like always knew all along that he would be the guy that she needed and it ended up very sweet good also, for context, if you didn't know, this one is a bonus track on the vinyl. You will not find ah, it yes. on um, streaming. I mean, you'll find the original on streaming. Mm-hmm. You can still listen to that. But um, 
and I will eat it up every time, even though that one lyric still doesn't make sense to me. Your um, eyes wider than distance. Wider than distance doesn't make sense. We've had this conversation before. Yeah. Uh, I went a love by design. It's a role reversal. Huh. She knew she was going to go do great things. Mm, mm-hmm. Well, that's cute. Um, And that's really the whole explanation. He just really had faith that she was going to go be a great architect Um, mm-hmm. and gave her up in the past because of it. He did. Um, and now he still knows that she's going to go on to oh, do great Grantham. things. He's just got so much faith in her. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's the whole reasoning. Sweeter than fiction. Hell yeah. So there you have it. We did it. It only took us we an hour it. and 40 minutes. It could have been longer. It could have. That's so true. So this is a win in my book. <laughs> uh, win. We say you will take what you get. Yes. Yeah, that was hard. Um, happy that it's over. Um, I didn't th- like. It was so hard. Well, you made it through. Ow. I did. Ooh. That's fine. Man. I just knocked my trash can over. Everything is fine. Um. Yep. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. Uh-huh. We've, we've got a little, maybe bit of a break, I think. Next episode's on December 8th. I don't think that, I think we skip a Friday, maybe. I think we skip Thanksgiving weekend. No, we're doing this is Thanksgiving this week, and we're I'm gonna drop this on the 24th on Black Friday. Oh, so however it shakes out, our next episode is The Bride by Julie Garwood. Um, that is our last old school school book for this season, and I have already read it, but it was two years ago, maybe three at this point. Um. So I'm very excited to reread it and see how I like it. I didn't do the audiobook back then either. I just bought the book. So um giving that a read. And I just remember a lot of like blanket fire sex. So good times will be had by us, I am sure. I mean, I haven't read Julie Garwood, but that is what I know her for. Sex in a mm-hmm. kilt by a fire. Sex in a kilt by a fire. Very true. Yes. And then we're almost done with the year. Whoa. So we got – and then we'll maybe do a hol- – I'm assuming we're going to do a holiday TBR. It's been very hit or miss with holiday reading. I'm just really trying to do the year of novellas for that because, like, if it's only 100 pages, can it hurt me that badly? Um, for some reason, Christmas books are just hard. Yeah, I have, I really struggle. I have Halloween books hit, I think, because they don't have to be Halloween specific. They yeah. can just be, like, magical or paranormal mm-hmm. or whatever. But Christmas books – and, of course, there's barely any other books for other winter holidays. So, yeah. you know, the, like, one mm-hmm. Kwanzaa and one Hanukkah book or whatever that you can find, especially mm-hmm. when you're trying to find historical. That just – Oh, historic. it's so hard. I know there's, like, a Kwanzaa series on KU. Yeah. Holly Jolly Diwali – um, which Diwali like has different dates, but it yeah, falls within it's... like this this range of fall winter. Um, Hanukkah, yeah, yeah, it's it's rough. Um, I would love there to be more for the historical romance, especially. Um, but we will see what we can come up with and do that, and then I think we should do the ranking of all of our old school school, and then see where that gets us. If we do the superlatives or whatnot, but yeah. Is it over now? Yes. <laughs>